No. What? <laughs> it's impossible. What's happening? Oh, there we go. As I said, it's too warm for my PC. I'm sorry, I can't change the conditions my PC is in. Yeah, my name is Debu, and you're watching the Go Champions League Season 4 Playoffs. Uh, yeah, we are in the third map mit uh, in uh, the second best of three. My brain is meshed. I've been casting around five hours now, so uh, XPC against preparation on Cobblestone. We are about to kick off the knife round, and it's gonna play a role. Not that big of a role, in my opinion, but... Um, I think it's just more... Uh, whoever is more comfortable with the start of this game will probably take it home. That's what I would say. And uh, some important guy in the scene, his name is Omicron, he's the manager of XPC, has told me to give a big shout out to the Romanian scene. He said, dude, everyone in Romania knows you now because you've been casting XPC so often. <laughs> it's quite funny. It's the same with uh, Space Soldiers, for example. I like those teams. I like to grow attached to teams as well. Like. For example, Efrag or another team that I really like is Spirit. Um, yeah, those kind of teams, I like them, and it's it's a lot of fun to cast them as well. Because you know they give their very best every single time. Now about that delay we had, I just wanted to update you on that one. Um, Cosmin had to go, and NKL is standing in for him. Now, I don't think it's a downgrade, I don't know if it's an upgrade, it's definitely okay, I think. Um, let's see how it, how it just unfolds. Now XPC on the CT side. And Jimka made his way into the drop zone already. The question is, will the CTs Make the right guess, or the wrong guess, or the wrong conclusion. And Jimka just playing with them at the moment. And Terra is still hold back. Jimka wants to separate the CTs as good as possible. He did drive them from each other. Now that's the first headshot. He beat with a oh, nice shot by White. No. And now Kree goes to work on White, getting it back to a man advantage for the Terrace. The CTs still have two players alive with full HP, while the Terrace are quite wounded. Free and El Patron with 27 and 13, but it doesn't matter because Ark is doing the majority of the work anyway. Now he shouldn't contest it anymore. That was a little bit too long, a tiny bit too long. Cement with a 1v2. That's definitely winnable for him now, especially since he only needs to hit them once, maybe twice if he's unlucky on Cree. Ah, there is the first one. That's definitely not an unlucky shot. El Patron needs to waste time. He spotted the heal of El Patron. He's jumping up and gets the kill. Falls back down, but he's got a defuse kid. What a clutch by Cement with a quad kill. Working his way in there. And I think I pointed out the key factor here. Ark was, was hanging around on that duel a little bit too long. He wanted to close it out right away. He didn't stick to the fight. He ran out of bullets. He had to turn away. Uh, he had to turn away and uh, run. And that's when he died. And that's when Simin got, got back in the round. So, good start for XPC. We had the same in both starting maps where actually the Terrors won the rounds and the CTs came back. Now the CTs won the round. Will the Terrors be able to come back? Yes, for everyone that doesn't know NKL, he's a Bulgarian player. He's uh, playing for MK, Mortal Kombat, the X e frag the X-Orbit, the... Uh, before that was the... Uh, which team did they play for? I forgot, doesn't matter. The terrorists do their very best trying to get the bomb planted. And I just do that with the routine and thanks for reminding me <laughs> of the team switching their positions again, I'm sorry. Yeah. There we go. Big shout out for 
Oh, big shout out to God Pulsor. It's really that hot in my room. And the score is obviously 1 to 1. Now we fix everything. And in the meantime, we didn't miss anything either. The CTs have white backstabbing them already. With the team kill on Dark. The Chaos. White with a Mac 7. Having trouble. How did that not hit? His crosshair was on him. And preparation will not get that many frags in the third round either. Um, Hidden L? H1 Danel? I'm not sure how to pronounce the name. I'm sorry, but. Uh, the substitute is because Cosmin had to leave. Um, he definitely didn't leave voluntarily, so... I don't know the reason why he had to leave, but I think it's something serious or something really important. Because this game is the game to get in the semi-final of the Go Champions League 4. And by getting to the semi-final, you get yourself to the prize pot places. Uh, the top 4 will go home with 500. Then the second place will get 1,500 and the first place 2,500. So quite some good amount of money for those young teams, for the, for the less known teams. You know, they rarely ever compete for the big prize pods of 2,200,000 to, you know, the million. Um, so obviously it's cool to earn your, your own money with the game. Now preparation, I've lost the first player, they are still determined to take it to B. And El Patron is opening it up over there, the CTs try to plug that hole with Cement reinforcing the stairs position, the flash comes in, everyone's blinded for a second and B regains vision a little, a little bit quicker than his opponent did. Now 3v3, the terrorists have to plant the bomb still. Might not be needed anymore as NKL is the last man standing. The terrorists have separated. Arg caught alone. NKL with the entry. A 1v2. The bomb goes down. But I think NKL wants to save. Or, well, 19 HP is not the best amount of HP. He wants to poke in to see if he gets a frag. It's okay. But he might not be able to do so. And Ubik is already next to him. He doesn't know yet. He will find out in a second. Or he might not find out. El Patron goes down. UB just waits. Just waits. Good job by UB. Easy frag. Nice job by preparation. Winning the first rifle round of 3 2 1 in, their f in the favor of XPC. The, well, not so clear, but the underdog, in my opinion, XPC. Did a very good job on the second map. They also did a good job at the start of train, but then they kind of they kind of fell short of preparation there. Cello standing to standing very near, very close to the hole in the wall where the terrorist would run through. He's got support with Simin, so they're the killing squad. SXE with P250 to support them a little bit. And in case there would be anything on A, they still have NKL over there. They also have White to back NKL up. And the terrorist rotate back towards A. With one minute on the clock. And Ark holds on to his position. He's the lone warrior. He had a strong second map. And he's got a few frags in this one as well. But he made a few tiny things that, uh, you know, you, you might call not really mistakes, but maybe misplays or overextending. Now he's keeping the CTs busy at B, they rotate everyone around. The closest to A is NKL with the Famous, and now he's out of position as well. Double smoke coming in by the terrorist, that is unnecessary. We are not playing 1.6 anymore. The white with the eagle. 
El Patron is picking it up as soon as he spots where the terrorists, uh, where the where the deeper shots were coming from. The terrorists turned around, and preparation on the way to the second round. XPC back and away. Essex he stays around with a P250. He might be able to pick up an exit frag. If he doesn't, dealing damage isn't that bad for XPC either. Preparation definitely need every kind of money they can get. So if SXC gets rid of one or two of their guns, it might have an impact later on. Doesn't look like it though. They're not going to push him and he's not going to push him, them. So everything stays as is. Preparation with the second round and XPC with two saved guns. They might put a, a good fight here. Preparation is not over the hump. They go for an XM. I'm not too sure if the XM is the right choice of weaponry on the terrorist side. Um, yeah, maybe if he's supported by one of his teammates. He can make it work, definitely. But it's definitely not the best one. Now, raw! Alright, Jimka! Nice headshot onto Simmons. He goes down to SXE. You beak with a kill onto SXE in turn and the 4v1. I have to correct myself, I wanted to say two, but Yubik was a little bit too quick for my tongue. Yubik with the triple kill. A six kills for him, nine on Simint. Now we have another rifle round. On our hands. He's just pre firing a little bit into the smoke. They have realized okay, we've got a situation here. We might have too many men around. We might have too many uh, CTs eager to get control of uh, the rotation area of drop zone. Patron with a double kill. Jimka with the XM going to work as well. SXC closes out, uh, closes out Jimka and pulls it back in preparation on the way to the B to the A platform. And SXC is already there. He doesn't have any equipment, but he's got an M4A1. Oh, that second shot onto El Patron on 16 HP. He needs to wait for his teammate. They have to abuse the man advantage. They have 30 seconds to work with. They can do it. El Patron baits in. SXC, patient as ever. Ah, uh, he's spraying away onto Ark, but the AK wrecks him with a headshot. 4 to 3 in favor of preparation. XPC with a Deagle on Excello, a 5.7, a P250, and a Deagle for White now. So they go for the upgraded pistols. And company should have an easy time getting rid of that buy round, uh, that, that safe round of XPC. Man, oh. I say A when I mean B, I say B when I want to say A, and I say safe round when I, s when I want to say buy round. And wow, it's weird today. Tune in tomorrow to check if I'm any better because it seems like my brain's starting to fall asleep. Maybe it's also just the lack of air conditioning because I'm sweating a lot at the moment. Cello and White with the two offs for the CTs, trying to shut down preparation. Cobblestone is kind of the map where people are still not really sure if it's a one-sided map or if there is a favorite side. It depends on how well your playing style suits the opponent. It's more or less a 50-50 thing. Terrorist might be a little more favored. If the stairs got added, it depends on how you play it. So, the 
Yeah, HPC you need a few more rounds. And UP just making it as hard as possible, kicking and screaming in all directions. He picks up two frags, then he goes down and now it's Ark. He's behind Cello, turns around and gets the frag. El Patron alone. He's got the bomb right off the drop zone, or uh, right off the platform. You see, another. Well, platform and drop zone, almost the same words, but they are different. And he leaves the bomb. Oh, he can rotate all the way around. But what are the CTs going to do? Now, Xello could actually go for that peak in there, while White could take a corner over here somewhere and cover from there. I think that would be a better setup, but I'm not sure. And it's hard to get that point across while you're playing, you know. Ooh, that was Xello. No, that was White shooting El Patron in the foot. And the CTs have taken both ops now, so it didn't even matter what kind of position they they want to go for. El Patron is going to save his op as well. The time is going to run out anytime soon. And XPC with the two orbs saved will give their money a little break. But five rounds in a row for preparation, so they have built up enough money. Now, who's gonna pick up the orbs on the CTs? They toss their weapons around wildly. Cell and White are going to stick with it. So XPC, with a decent setup. White is looking for the opening kill. Nobody there. Still nobody there, so... He's just going to stay there without support from long. That's very dangerous. Now he picks up Ubeek. The patience pays off in the end, even though he didn't have any cover from the flank. If the terrorists were a little bit quicker, they could have surrounded him without him knowing it. Now he set up his scope on a long, and Ark is going to run in there. <laughs> Foot shot. It's not a headshot. Does a lot of damage, but it's not enough to kill. And KL with a kill onto Kree, and the terrorists separated from each other. They have Jimka on the other side of the map. El Patron and Ark are still at A, and Ark has to contain NKL or whoever else is there. He flashes into a main. Ooh, that took way too long for Ark to spot NKL. El Patron with a trade on to White in between, but NKL is pushing for it. He goes down to Jimka. The round is opened up again by the two terrorists, making them move into the A side. El Patron needs to find a frag on the back of the player, but he goes down to Xello through the smoke. SXC. Goes down to Jimka, now the time is running low, Jimka needs to hurry up, he needs to find some in, but the CT shoots him from below and XPC will equalize the score 5-5. Five to five. Preparation with another buy round, but after that it's only the loser bonus left for them. They have the beacon out the throne who would be able to buy up with the loser bonus, but their teammates wouldn't be. So it would be a mixed buy. I'm not too sure if they should go for it. They have did such a good job so far. No reason to jeopardize very confident. Oh, as you see, with a beauty double kill. UMP to work on the terrorist city. With one as well. He's shut down that push all together. XPC with a sixth round. And now they got some momentum, you can tell. They're way more confident. The quick round by preparation didn't pay off. Terrorists will probably slow down again and take a more methodical, systematic approach to the round. And while preparation would have been able to put two guns in the hands of the Beacon Arc or a Beacon Jimka, they didn't go for it. So, after going company with the Tech Nines and armor, they will only collect one kill. But now they are on the full buy, and that's what I was talking about before. I like the decision by preparation to not buy in the previous one, or only buy Tech 9s and armor, and um, save the money for the real deal in this one. NKL at A main, he spots both of the terrorists, no reply, 
the CTs with a massive start in this round. Preparation left guessing where their teammates went. Sallow on to crease and lags on the go TV. Jimka and El Patron in a 2v5. Jimka flashes himself in this time around. He is prepared for MKL. Easy kill on him. El Patron. Ooh, taking a lot of time to get his crosshair on the SXE. And when it was there, he didn't pull the trigger anymore. Or he couldn't. And White with the last one as Jimka gets put to rest. A three round difference now for XPC. Winning five rounds in a row. Now, what will the terrorists be able to do here? Salo has a shooting gallery in front of himself. In front of him, rather. And that's gonna be easy kills for SEC as well. Pick 9 for the win. UB goes down. XPC with a 9 to 5. Now, that slipped away a little bit too quickly for preparation, didn't it? 10 kills on UB and Jimka. 3 only has 4. He was so good on the first map. Now 14 for SXE. He's playing drop zone and the terrorists are really feeding him. Simint with 13 and 12 Foxello. And don't forget about NKL. He's sitting at the bottom right now, but whenever he's needed, he will be there and he did get a lot of kills in those A executions. Now he's joining his teammates on the B side. They boost each other up onto the tree. Cement is there now. So the terrorist's job just got a little bit harder. The tree position is a very strong one. Especially if you don't have the numbers on the terrorist side to you. know, usually the guy on the tree will get one frag before he's spotted or seen or heard or whatever. And um, if he plays his position correctly, he's not going to be flashed, so he will see you run into the bomb site, and then he can cover his teammates from above. So you kind of need one guy to find if there is somebody on the tree. Either you have one dedicated guy covering this position, or um, or one guy that runs in and is the decoy that catches all the bullets, and then everyone knows where the CTs are. As you see, the last anchor on the A bomb site. Nice headshot on two three. He follows it up with a second. As you see, on fire. He fires onto Ubik as well, but doesn't do too much damage. The angle on the wood isn't that that good for the spray. Now he's coming around. He hears Ubik approach him. As you see, with the ace, as he turns around and gets rid of El Patron, ten to five. Nice play by SXE. What a nice play, really. Especially on the truck. That headshot and that shot. Those were really nice. And then the timing was perfect as well on the two last kills. Very good job by SXE. 19 kills and 15 rounds. The Romanian side with a five round lead. If they win this pistol round on the second half, on the T side as well, that means the CTs can't go for any. Well, it doesn't mean they can't go for it, but they will probably not go for it. Uh, the four spy in the third round, for example, that's only possible on the terrorist side. And if XPC win the pistol on the T side, they will definitely win. Well, if they don't mess up horribly, but they should definitely win three rounds in a row. And that's 13 to 5. And a lot of pressure on the first weapon round. So this pistol is so important. Preparation, go for halfway, five men stack on B. Well, Jimka is on A technically, but the distance to B is very short. So now he's actually going for the A bomb site. 
Realizing that the terrorists want to go for his hometown, his homestead. Three is already there at the balcony and I don't know why they didn't push forward to the truck. Oh, that's maybe why. RD3 with two frags really quickly. Disposing of all the terrorists there. A 10 to 6 preparation leave no question unanswered. XPC with no bomb planned. Going for the force buy. Tech 9s on four of them with a deagle on white. He doesn't have armor. But he's got a flash grenade to get his position uh, to get his teammates in position. The CTs already have Kree over there. They also have Ubeek at the stairs and Ark on the chicken coop to support both of his teammates. And Kree retreats. Good decision by him. It would have been dead meat. Now Ubeek with a famous. He's about to be overwhelmed. That doesn't look too promising. Ark is in the chicken coop. He's got the longest distance fights. But XPC is closing it in. Well, it doesn't matter. His, his aim is on point at preparation. Win the second round without too much hassle. Only one casualty. Jimka with the UP on the NKL. The terrorists will not have anything to do with. Easy kickings for the CTs. Jimka with three, Ark with two. Preparation on the eighth round. Now it's the rifle round for XPC. They still have this one to figure out how the CTs click. After that, it's getting a little bit too close. And uh, possibly even the 10 to 10. Yes. I mean, NKL having 4,000 on the left side. No, he doesn't. He bought everything he can. Uh, that's just another uh, user interface bug on uh, Cisco. Preparation. Getting ready for possible A push by NPC. The Romanians are setting up in front of the A side. They leave NKL very far back inside the hallways of B. So he just gets put there. He's a stand-in. They didn't have too much time to prepare. So he gets put there and the rest of the squad is doing their four-man thing. Somebody's taking Kasmin's role if uh, that's actually needed. And everything should be alright for XPC. That's a good thing about the terrorist side. You can actually play 5v4 if you know, I mean, 5v4 and a half. And I peed it long enough with the flag. <laughs> I had to <laughs> sell over the headshot on Tail Patron 4v4. And uh, it looks good for the terrorists now. But they lose another guy to arc with a grenade. They are on the side, they just have to plan. Uh, they will do that while Xello finds another kill of three. The second one for Xello. The third overall. Ark goes back, but SXC with a reply. It's a 2v1. Jimka left alone. He's already flanked by, <laughs> well, Xello, but it didn't matter. SXC was coming in from the front. XPC with the 11th round. They win the first rifle round against preparation. It looked quite okay for the CTs in the middle of the round. But XPC and especially Cello with the triple, SXC with the double. Important round. And that's when Cello steps up. 16 kills on him. 21 for SXC. Taking it slow on a long this time around. They made a rotation back towards B last time, so it's not actually giving away too much, especially with 1 minute 5 on the clock. They just, you know, they could just take map control, which is a good idea in my opinion. 
taking a long control uh, kind of blinds the CTs around the A bomb site. They, they can't predict you as as easily as they could if they had anyone in A in A long in particular. And now they're rotating back and forth again. El Patron on the 5-7 close by. His teammate Jimka is holding behind him with the orb. El Patron needs to divert the attention towards his side. But now Jimka made the rotation towards B. And Kel is there. He's alone. And it will be a, a nice little read if preparation. No, well, NKL is to stand in. Let's rotate back. El Patron to the right. Yes, the right moment to make that move as well. He gets two kills. SXC is the last man standing. And it's surely asked too much even for him. Preparation win the round with 9 to 11 now. XPC have no money left. Have to save the CTs with a chance to pull it back to only one round difference. So now we need to we need to watch out because uh, preparation know that NKL is a stand-in. They also know that XPC uses him as the lurker. So XPC need to switch it up eventually. Otherwise, it's getting too obvious as soon as the CTs spot NKL, it's, you know, ah, oh, the rest is on the other side of the map. But what an XPC could do is show NKL, for example, show NKL over here. And then, everyone's behind there. They show NKL and let NKL die. And then they don't make a move for a few moments. Ideally, they would have somebody over here. I know, it's it's weakening this push. But if you have somebody over here that throws one grenade into A or something like that, makes the CTs move out of position, and then XPC pushes in together. That would be outsmarting your opponent if it works. <laughs> now El Patron with only one traded by the Tech-9 in the hands of Cello. Jimka on the orb, but Xello is firing on his teammates. Ark is able to get himself into safety just in time. The Romanian side spread around the map. They just want to pick up kills. It's not going to look like they can do that. Why is the last man standing with the Deagle? He's only getting one more. 11 to 11. Preparation have equalized the score again. Look at how this game unfolds. It's streak after streak after streak after streak. see on another B execution the CTs prepared for that one already two players still alive in there Cree is on 6 HP so he might not be the strongest player anymore Xello quickly disposes of him and XPC with a 4v1 at hand Alpha Throne coming in from behind but the terrorists should expect him really soon yeah Xello already peaks but a little bit too late El Patron and Kel goes down. SXC and White working together, trying to defend the bomb. It's sick and fast and fast. El Patron needs to find a way out really soon. He's just been tagged again by White. Flash is out in case the terrorists want to hunt him down, and it's not going to happen. XPC win the round. Preparation will not be able to take the lead. It's the Romanian team coming back again after a small hiatus of three rounds.
like a kill on another team. But this time around, they also have two players that A. I think SXE will join White in a few moments. He's just defensively aiming at A long. While preparation is starting the killing on Tuxello, who was alone at B platform. And KL did accompany him, but he's got a bomb, so he doesn't want to go for the peak in case, you know, Valve implemented something really interesting. Physics on a bomb. It's like snakes on a plane, but even worse. So, if you happen to die on B platform, chances are the bomb falls down, it rolls over and lands on the A platform site. No, I accelerated, but... I think you get the idea. It will fall down to the B bomb site, and then you have to go back and pick it up, and you know. Three with a kill onto SXE, then gets traded by Simin, so a 4v3 again. B didn't hear Simin. Oh, that wasn't supposed to happen. <laughs> Simin with a kill onto Ark, now a 3v2. Simin still on the prowl, he goes down eventually. And then KL, <laughs> wherever he turns, there's a CT popping up, so really no chance for him. 12 to 12. Oh, the teams are not giving each other that much to work with here. Financially speaking, momentum speaking, momentally, momentum, no. Speaking about momentum. <laughs> and at the same time, they make each other pretty hard to read with their spread out attacks. The terrorists make it hard for the CTs to adjust themselves. Now Creed picks up a triple kill and one assist. And preparation make it 13 to 12 really quickly. The terrorist quick push wasn't successful at all. But we have seen the same by preparation and it wasn't the strongest rounds anyway. XPC waiting for the money to stack up. And I think Dildog, which is a cool name, <laughs> uh, made a fair point here. NKL didn't get a single kill on the terrorist side so far. I will check that just to be sure. Um, but let's watch this execution. Maybe he's getting the first one. Epatron with the first. <laughs> oh, you beak almost got a teammate. And you can see Ark, he's still, still chilling on the other side of the map. CTs have to retake the bomb got planted. That's a very nice job by XPC already. There goes Cello through the small on to two, on to three. Now he can ace them. Ark and Creed, the last man alive on the CT side. Creed goes down to AKL. There is a frag and Cello with the fourth. And that's how you win an eco round. You have to go for risks. You have to go for it. And sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. But if it works, you're the hero and the others are down to zero. Wow, now let's check that out. Yeah, it's his first frag in the half. Cello and company back on their successful execution, but can you really call it successful? Because it's like, it's like a real mixture. It's not a real recipe. Yeah, they, they won two rounds on the B-bomb side. But they also lost a few rounds on B. And this one is starting like a loss. They fought back a few times already. Now they can pull it off again. But they have to get into the side somehow. And preparation already have four players around. One of them is Kree. He stepped up massively. But he gets caught with an aid in his hands by Simin. Then drop zone. The terrorists have two players in there. They will pin in on the bomb site. And no rotation by preparation so far. Cello is hopping into the side. Alpha Tron gets flashed. He can't support his teammates. Finally regains vision to get the first frag. There goes the second. It's the third overall for him. And the 2v2 coming up. And Jimka pushed through with his own orb. He's flanking Simin and Cello as well. Preparation with a 14 to 13. They're going back and forth. Back and forth. Those rounds, so close. Well, that not so much, but that was that uh, quick save round throw by XPC. But those rounds, they were 
all very close. Next we see with three rounds in this half. Preparation string or strung five together in one row. Now XBC have to find that sweet spot. They have to find that the timing. The execution. That's the the thing to crack the CTs wide open. They have planted a bomb. So they have found a system to plant the bomb consistently. But El Patron and Ark will get the first two frags. El Patron impeccable in the first frags in the past few rounds. And the CTs have made it a 4v3 with White's reply on the terrorist side. He's a still in control, SXC is not gonna get that spray! Ark stays alive with 41, you peak! And Ark will get one more, NKL with a Galil against the rest on the side. He's picking off Jimka, Ark is still on the defuse, he picks it up! And you peak is staying alive, almost killing NKL. But the defuse went through, Ark trusted his teammates. He trusted his teammates, they will cover me, I trust them. He didn't let loose of the bomb. They probably would have won the round anyway, but NKL really had no chance anymore. Now XPC up against two match points, two semi-final points and two $500 points at least. $5,000 up for grabs in the GoChip Season 4 brought to you by Faceit and uh, the guys in the background. Shout out to everyone. You know who you are. Zimin and Kree. Your tip for Ted. But NKL and Xello will find the upper hand for the terrorists. The CTs in a 2v3. The terrorists have not gained that much control around the map. They got the kills, but they couldn't maintain any control. So they have to still push into the site. Beak in drop zone has a good angle. He's not too exposed. At the same time, he's got a fair amount of control. And the terrorists have to see if they can find him. And he needs to wait for his teammate to be around. Or he can get cheeky and go down to white. He just came around the statue. Jimka knows it's his cue to go for the save. And let's take a look at the CT's money situation. No loser bonus. So they will end up with plus 1,400. That equals 2,700 on Jimka. He can drop. Ark and Ubeek will end up with 3,400. That's by themselves, and then El Patron and Cree, one of them has to face the harsh reality of not having a pistol. Well, Jimka could drop his 5.7, so they will have a pistol, and they could get some more equipment in, the, in their hands. Terrorists win. Let's see what preparations decide to do. Uh, Jimka is definitely gonna drop for his teammates. Yeah, here's the famous already. Ark will buy himself. So will... Ubeek. Right. Ubeek went for the cheese kit rather than the rifle. So that's an important decision. And obviously also the grenades. Ooh, Cement almost goes down to Kree there. That was a little clumsy. Kree. Dealing massive damage to Cement, but XPC with a man advantage, and now it makes this round so much easier for them. Jimka on the orb. He's around on the side, but Cement gets another one on the Elf Patron. Ubeek with a 5 7 kill. Ark and Jimka up against four terrorists in this possibly last round. SXE is intercepting Ark. It's all up to Jimka. He's yet to be seen, he's yet to be found, but he gets killed in the end. 15 to 15. XPC will draw it to an overtime. 25 kills on Cello and SXE sharing the top spot. But Cement did a good job at the end as well. And on the other side we have 23 on Ark and Jimka. 22 on El Patron. So the top fragging department is definitely equal. The difference are those two players, UB, Cree, NKL, and White. So we will have... Now, I... I think we have 15k and MR3.
And Cal wants to get it on the way. And there we go. Preparation. Preparing themselves, maybe. No pun intended, by the way. So, we will have 15k MR3. Please start the discussion about overtime now. <laughs> XPC determined to take it to A at least at the start of this round. Jimke is there at this post. Oh, nice reaction by him onto Xello. He pulls away. He's got support with Ark. And the terrorist will not catch him anymore. SXE goes down to 34. Thanks to. Thanks to what? I think there must have been a tag. Yeah, that. They were lined up. I think there was the option of Jimke traveling through Xello and wounding SXE. Ark in a desperate position. But the terrorists, they will not. They might not check it. They will not. Ark is still there. UB drawing the attention away. Now he goes down to white, but the terrorist is already alone. And preparation will clinch the first round of the overtime on the CT side. Now, money is not really that big of a problem, at least not for the terrorist side. And uh, it might only be, or might have been a problem for preparation if they had lost this first round. So, XPC with another full buy. White on the orb again. Jimka and El Patron with the orbs on the CT side. El Patron. On the chicken coop while Jim Kerr gets back into the deeper part of the A bomb side. Rather, rather wants to stay safe than exposed. Nice counter by the CGs. The terrorists make their first move, and you can see all the equipment flying their way. Two Molotovs, smokes, and flashes come raining in, delaying that initial push. Now Kree has to step up against the two terrorists coming in from there. Simint has been so important to the terrorists. And if they can't contain him, it might be a lost cause for preparation. But as you can see yourself, the CTs do a good job holding on to the initial push. Now it's SXC and White. The second wave is coming through. They will try to bash through, but it's not going to happen. Ark with a headshot on to SXC. White is left alone. He's using the P250 already in the close quarter combat. Now he's got two CTs to work against. One already revealed his position, that's Jimka. Narc is at the statue. White will try to draw him out. 16 HP, nice nade by White. Dunking it in. Ooh, but a Molotov will draw him back and Ark goes for the peak. Nice communication by his preparation. Nice try by White. Didn't work out, 17 to 15. And one more round to go in this first half of the first overtime. Now El Patron goes for the autoscope. He is there to support him. El Patron in the second line of defense by Kree is getting the first kill. El Patron racks up the second. The terrorists are quickly running out of HP and man at the same time. White going down as well. El Patron so impressive. He's playing his way into my heart. 18 to 15. In favor of preparation, a flawless CT side. Something that XPC is definitely also capable of doing. So, let's not call it a day yet. Now, two offs on the CT side, one on the terrorist side, on El Patron. No surprises there. Oh, White is gonna smoke it off. The terrorists seem to be focused on the A side now. Four players around, while three is alone at the other side of the map.
is holding on to their positions. They have two players around at A. And Kel taking an aggressive stance. And by pushing down into the slope, he doesn't have any support anymore. White can't help him out. Or is he on top of that? No, he's not on top of the truck. That would have been a weird angle anyway. And Jimka will make that push into the slope in a few seconds. UB and company run into the A side. Cello and Enkel will pick up the first frags. There goes White. Arc is down as well. El Patron. He's the last man alive. He gets two. And that's just the El Patron fashion here. Now he's aiming at the door. At the same time, he's exposed to three different angles, but picks up SXC. Oh, El Patron is not able to clutch it in the end. 18 to 16. Preparation with a chance. Two more chances to win this best of three and get themselves into the semi-final of the GOAT Champions League Season 4. Aggressive stand by White on the B platform, looking into B long. Preparation just let the clock run down. They want to make the CTs nervous. The T's know that they are in the driving seat mentality wise. They have a little more experience than XPC. And they are probably a little more calm. Or a little calmer in this situation. There goes Creep. On to White. A 5v3 already, but look at your beaks and Jimka's HP. It's definitely feasible to pull back for the CT's arc. But the action on the cement makes it less likely. Salo is already taken down, and that's it. Preparation will move on to the semi final of the GOAT Champions League Season 4 with a 19 to 16 scoreline against XPC. What a nice fight by the young Romanian squad. I have to congratulate them too this performance and I also congratulate preparation for the qualification to the semi-final and also winning at least $500 already and last but not least you guys out there you've been amazing I love you from the bottom of my heart really it wouldn't be possible to cast games like that if it wasn't for you so make sure to follow this channel follow me on Twitter I will give you the links in the chat real quick and yeah stay around for some ads it's just supporting the organizer Thank you for sticking around and make sure to tune in tomorrow when it's the next stage of the GOAT Champions League Season 4. I thank you. Good night.